A stereotype is an idea or belief about a thing or a group based on looks and behavior, and many of us are guilty of having them, but we cannot allow them to govern the way we live our lives. Unfortunately, a lot of people do this amongst many different things, including dog breeds. So many people do it and don't even realize it because it's become a social norm. So some dogs are looked at as the American dream, like your golden and Labrador retrievers, while others, unfortunately, are labeled as dangerous, like pit bulls, chow chows, huskies, just to name a few. Like many, I say, don't blame the breed, blame the deed. I'm Raven Alfred, and today we're gonna meet five wagging tails that I'm sure are going to stop the hype on the stereotype. breed that we're gonna go over this is Mo and this is Tiffany and she's gonna tell us a little bit about Mo um, what she knows about pit bulls and other dogs that she's worked with that she can tell us how awesome this breed is yeah so like Raven said Mo is a pit bull um, and first off just want to put it out there a lot of people use pit bull interchangeably with you know bully breed or bull terrier uh, so if you hear any of those probably is a pit bull or in that family. Um, you know, there are a couple other breeds, you know, like American Bulldog and, you know, some slight differences, but a lot of times people try to avoid using the word pit bull because pit bulls have a very bad rap. Ah, true. Yes, so historically people, when you think of pit bulls, a lot of people leap to thinking about dog fighting, uh, aggressive dogs, dogs that snap, you know, hurt people, can't be trusted around small children, things like that. And unfortunately they get that rap because these are common dogs to use in dog fighting. Uh, this is because they're very muscular, the muscular bodies, they have very strong jaw. And of course, unfortunately, some people don't know how to raise their dogs or socialize them properly, which is the key to having a healthy, well-adjusted dog, no matter what the breed is. So, <clears throat> um, luckily for these guys, even though a lot of times they're put in bad situations, abusive homes, um, dog fighting rings, they are very good at bouncing back. That's good. So a lot of times, you know, even though that they had a bad background, they are able to be placed in a home, you know, without dangers of um, snapping or injuring anybody. So that's always good. They are very loving. Mo is actually one of the most chill dogs I've ever met. He's good with all situations, loud noises, fireworks. He just doesn't care. Uh, he loves children. Um, yeah, I like. I will add that I know Mo for the last couple months and I love this dog. <laughs> he is awesome. Um, so, like you said, like they're really built athletic. They have a lot of energy and stuff like that. And you said mm -hmm. socializing is the key thing for any dog, though. Yes, for any breed. Any breed, um, okay. You know, pit bulls can be a little bit protective. You know, be honest, a lot of dogs can be. You know, you'll see um, some of my other ones that we have. And the big thing is just giving them boundaries and telling them and teach them at a young age, you know, what is okay and what is not okay. Uh, and getting them used to all situations so they're comfortable and they don't feel threatened. So, Bo is actually one of our fosters. So, and yeah, that he's, he's an awesome dog. We're actually celebrating him. One of his last days with us, he is going to his forever home in a few days. Yay! Yeah, yay! So, you'll see a little ice treat that he has here um, that we made him. It has a bone, some peanut butter swirls, and stuff like that. <laughs> Clumsy, mister. Hi. I love this dog. <laughs> awesome. Well, that's Mo. And as you can see, he's gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you, Tiffany. You're very welcome. 
<laughs> Next we have who? This is Emma. Emma is a husky. Oh, a husky. This is like one of the most popular dogs that people really like to get, right? Yes. They're very, they're beautiful dogs, gorgeous. Um, Emma, right? People love their eyes. I don't know if you're able to get a shot of that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they're gorgeous. So the idea of a husky is wonderful. Um, the actuality of owning a husky usually doesn't quite live up to people's original expectations. Huskies, where they're beautiful, they are super hyper. Um, you know, they're bred, of course, to be snow dogs. So, Ooh. picture an animal that their job is to help pull a sled full of humans and supplies, you know, long long distances, through snow drifts. Um, they have to be very strong and they also have to have a lot of endurance. You know, so super hyper. And if these dogs don't get that activity level down, so they don't get enough exercise, that hyperness will come out in other ways, usually destructive ways. So these guys are also known for, for digging. I guess maybe out more out in nature, you know, they would dig a hole if it was hot and in order to keep cool, you know, that cold dirt. In the winter, they would dig a hole in the snow to be protected from a lot of the strong winds, you know, to help them stay a little bit warmer. So, natural instinct is to dig. They can actually dig quite a bit, and that can be a lot of pretty destructive. Nobody likes to have gigantic poles randomly put in their yard. Uh, they can also easily dig under fences. There's something else they're known for, is being escape artists. As I said, they like to pull, you know, they're bred to pull sleds, so they live run long distances. They are also known as runners. So once they get out, most of them will just run and run and run. So it's really hard in order to, to keep them in. You know, secured space and also keep track of them once they get out. So if for someone who might want to get a husky for, you know, as a family pet or dog, would you highly encourage um, training for this breed? Yes, training is a necessity. Um, they are smart, uh, so they can be easy to train to a certain extent. Um, just like one of my other dogs, you know, Remington, he's the Shiba New American Eskimo bit. Um, they can be a little too smart and you know, to outsmart you know, the trainer. So they're really good dogs for an active family. So if you're more of a couch potato, uh, probably is not the dog for you. Um, so yeah, training is very important. If you ask most people in vet clinics, they're known to be um, you know, biters or nippy. So that is definitely something that you would want to work on. That's something we had to work on with Emma. She has a little, she's a fear biter. So we definitely worked really hard to make sure that that wasn't an issue with her being pulled around. Awesome. And that's Emma. Next up, we have, what's his name? This is Remington. Remington. And Remington is what breed? He's actually a mix. He is half Shiba Nu, half American Eskimo. Ooh, fancy. So tell me a little bit about both breeds um, and do they have a stereotype associated with them? Yes, uh, Shiba Nu, you'll probably recognize that breed, um, part of him. That's what I feel like he looks more like. He's just a little bit bigger. Uh, you'll recognize them from the, the Doge means. <laughs> you know, so they've become very popular since those started happening. Uh, Shiba News are very intelligent. Uh, they're known for being aloof. So you'll see a lot of YouTube videos with owners trying to give them a kiss and the dog backing up or putting a pop to stop them. Um, <laughs> they're also, both of his breeds are heavy shedders. So you can see. Oh, wow. See that? So if he you is get fluffy. one of these, is it on? yes, uh, be prepared for a lot of grooming. Grim is right. Hi. <laughs> and the other parts 
of him. The American Eskimo is also another um, you know, dog that takes a lot of grooming. They are very, very hyper dogs. Uh, they can be destructively hyper, so they need to have a lot of exercise to get that energy out. Um, and Shiba Nus are actually more of a challenging breed, so they're not recommended for first time pet owners, which I learned what the hard way. <laughs> he is my first dog is she? You know, that I owned, and I can attest to the difficulty level. This is right. So I cried about every day for the me. first year of his life. He needed to have exercise for at least two hours every day, oh. otherwise he destroyed something. So we went through a lot of money replacing things around the house uh, that you know, he took his excess energy out on. <laughs> <laughs> so they have a lot of energy which can in turn, if it's not let out, could be destructive. Yes. Gotcha. Yep, definitely. Um, as a puppy, as I said, Shiba News can be, are known for being aloof, uh, which he was. It was torture. He was this cute little fluff ball, and he hated being held. He hated being touched. The only thing he let me do was hold his puppy Nyla bone for him while he chewed it. Uh, he did grow up to like being pet. Um, you can see he went over to Raven earlier and gave <laughs> some nice kisses. <laughs> Uh, but it's, it's not a sure thing. These dogs, the Shiba Nusk, are kind of more like cats in that way. All right. And then the other breed? The American Eskimo. American Eskimo. What are they known for? What's their temperament and all that? Um, they said they're very hyper. Uh, they're kind of more famous for being more of a circus dog. Oh, uh, they okay. became popular because um, people used to train them to walk on like tight ropes. You know, this is very showy uh, behavior. So also intelligent though. Yes, both very intelligent. So be prepared for them to trick and outsmart you <laughs> constantly. <laughs> That's awesome. Yes. All right. And that was Remington. Where did his name come from? What's, what's his full name, by the way? Uh, my dogs have first and middle names because I'm a firm believer that I like having two names when I'm mad. <laughs> So it gives them okay. more of a hint that I'm getting upset if I have to use their full name. But his full name is Remington Chesterfield. Uh, Remington. Oh. Hi, <laughs> yeah. And this is the energy. I yes. <laughs> he is 14 years old and people Whoa. still think he's a puppy because he's so high energy. Uh, Remington actually was named after Remington Steel, which is a detective show from the 80s starring Pierce Bronson. Love him. <laughs> And Chesterfield is just a middle name we I picked because it flowed nicely um, and kind of matches his personality. A lot of times he's very, like I said, regal and aloof, uh, just like, you know, they tell you with the Sheba breed. He sounds fancy. He is. <laughs> very <laughs> fastidious. He doesn't like being dirty. Um, yeah. Something made a mess in an area that he doesn't want any part of he won't touch it so if you throw a ball in a dog park and it's in an area that a lot of dogs use the bathroom in you have to get the ball yourself he will not touch it <laughs> he's aloof then yeah. definitely mm -hmm. awesome and that was remington yep all right guys we're back here with tiffany and who do we have here today uh this is charlie so charlie is one of my four and he is a Chihuahua mix. Chihuahua mix. So do Chihuahuas have a bad rap as well? Yes, Chihuahuas do have a reputation. Uh, most people, when you think of Chihuahua, you think of a tiny, yappy dog. Um, one that has a bit of a Napoleon complex. So they have very little self-awareness on how small and breakable they are. So they have a tendency to run up and challenge bigger creatures and animals that can actually easily do a lot of damage to them. Does Charlie ever try to be bold and brave? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie is kind of the protector of um, our house or our pack. So we've had it where we were out and about and you know another dog, a you know, bigger dog, 
you know, like Doberman Pinscher, um, Rottweiler, we'll start getting a little rough with one of our bigger dogs, you know, they're like 40 to 60 pounds. And Charlie will rush and do what he feels he needs to do to defend um, his canine brother or sister. So it usually involves us not being able to take care of any problem that might actually be occurring with the bigger dogs. Our focus is on getting him before he reaches any kind of problem <laughs> going on <laughs> so he doesn't get hurt. <laughs> Awesome. And what do you think is a thing that people should know that makes Chihuahuas great? Chihuahuas are very um, loving you know, dogs. They're very popular because they're cute. They're tiny. Uh, they're actually one, if not the smallest breed of dog in the world. And um, because of that, they're love being held, they love being cuddled and waited upon hand and foot. Um, just like Charlie here. He usually loves being held. Right now he is focused on some squirrels behind us. <laughs> is that right, Charles? <laughs> um, but because of that, they're great dogs for people that you know, kind of have that more mothering instinct or, you know, want that in their dog. Um, they are smart. They are pretty easy to train. They're small. Um, it gets more difficult as they get older. They tend to be more set in their ways. And because they are small and people tend to baby them, people tend to let them get away with um, with a bunch of bad behaviors. And then that can be kind of hard to fix. But he's a lovable pup. He is. If you want to see him run off, you want that? You want to just go? And there he goes. <laughs> That's Charlie. Yep. <laughs> and last but not least, we have... This is Kiara. Full name, Kiara Penelope. And Kiara is a Labrador Retriever Chow Chow Mix. Chow Chow Mix. Okay, so Chow Chows do fall under the list of bad raps, right? Yes. Um, chows are... Yeah, their bad reputation is... Um, you know, being aggressive, uh, biting a lot. So a lot of home insurance companies won't actually uh, provide a policy to owners of chows. Interesting. Um, do Labradors have a bad reputation? No, Labradors are actually known as really good family dogs. Um, this is a mix that we're kind of seeing more and more, you know, Lab and Chow. So you just have to be careful on assuming what personality traits um, will come across and with that mix. Labradors are another sport dog. Um, so they were bred to actually go out and you know bring back you know fish or nets that have fallen off fishing boats. So they're actually used a lot, yeah, used a lot in hunting. So, of course, she's eating opposite direction from you guys. You can't see her beautiful face. <laughs> <laughs> um, she... <laughs> so that's a Labrador. Yeah, so they are higher energy dogs. Uh, they do like activity, but they're more of a pack oriented dog. <laughs> <laughs> so right now you see Kiara barking. Um, that's more of the chow side of her. Chows are territorial. They are protective. Um, so those are traits that Kiara did get from her chow side. So it's actually really important uh, for chows, especially chow owners, is to start training and socializing when they're really little. You want them to get used to people coming in and out of your house, around the family, um, so they're used to it. And that will avoid a lot of potential issues later in life when they get older, um, so they don't become overly defensive and territorial you know, risking the safety of people that you might be having come over. Awesome. And Kiara is, you do a lot of training with Kiara as well, right? Yep. Um, so you see Kiara kind of has that territorial protective streak from Chow's. So on walks, um, you know, she would tend to, you know, start barking 
you know, ask people to come and approach us. So we work on that. You know, we can just do a simple look command. Here, look. Yeah. That breaks her focus on it, and then she gets rewarded for walking by and minding her own business. Mind your business is another command <laughs> that we use in our house. <laughs> um, and just for the lab side, you know, which is hyper, cows don't have that much, um, don't have a really high activity level, but the labs do. So we also do a lot of training so she can get some of that activity, um, you know, exercise, you know, that she needs to kind of keep her even keel. All right, awesome. And that's Kiara. Stopping the hype on the stereotype is easily done by learning about each specific dog and their individual needs and the natural history of each breed. I'd like to send a special thank you to Tiffany Smith and her family of fur, her four canines and foster dog, known on Instagram as Pocalypse. So go ahead over to Instagram at Pocalypse and give these furry canines a follow. Their page is full of fun and cute videos and pictures. These dogs have their bowls often full as they take part in cosplaying. I guess in this case, we'd call it dogsplaying. But go check them out. You maybe even might see one of your favorite pop culture characters or icons. I'll have the link below. And also, if you're interested in learning more about the pup's rescue stories, their care and daily lives, you should also subscribe and follow the Tiffany's blog page titled Penny's Places and Paws. Along with being a skilled animal trainer, Tiffany also has a knack for traveling and budgeting. Her blog tagline is saving pennies to go places and spoil your paws. All the social media links will be available in the video description box. Thank you again so much for tuning into the Care Corner and a big thank you again to Tiffany Smith and her four lovable pups. Everybody hang in there. We're all working together to work through this pandemic. I hope to keep creating content that is fun and interesting. I'll leave you with this. John Grogan, American journalist and nonfiction writer, best known for his book, Marley and Me, once said, there's no such thing as a bad dog, just a bad owner. Until next time, say bye, Charlie. Who let the dogs out? Ho, 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 ho.